Hi, and welcome to another episode of Getting Dirty with Glenn. Today, I have to deal with my feathered friends. A lot of my feathered friends are literally giving me the bird. I've been a little lax the last couple days, not filling up their bird feeders. I've got one behind me down here in this planter, and I've got a couple out here in front. Let's see what kind of bird feeders I've got and what I've got to do to keep my birds happy. All right, here in Wisconsin, we're obviously on the western side of Lake Michigan and that is considered a major north-south flyway for my, excuse me, migrating birds. And so I get a, just an endless variety of birds here. It's great uh, just sitting here and looking out this window and watching the birds feed. A two feeder, got a bell on top of it, protects from squirrels coming in from the top. Squirrels don't jump in from the side. Uh, and over here, got a two-sided suet feeder uh, both sides are empty, which is why the birds are upset. I get two or three varieties of woodpeckers on here every day. This top, if an animal should sit on it, they'll just slide right off. And uh, <clears throat> then we've got over here, we've got this post uh, bird feeder sitting here, once again, strategically placed close enough that the birds can get protection in our sad evergreens here in southern Wisconsin due to the very warm summer. Those bird feeders, and I'll show you when I change this camera to a different tripod, this just drops down, very easy to fill from the top. Um, and we've got surrounded by 13 acres of alfalfa fields, so, and lots of evergreens from our neighbors next door. Lots of places for birds to come from and get protection in other evergreens on the property. So what I'll do is let me go in and fill up my bird feeders. Uh, actually get the bird seeds, show you how I fill these up. Just keep my bird seed underneath here. And I buy a mix of bird seed from our local supplier. I'll buy just a generic mix and then I'll buy a concentration of sunflower seeds and mix them both together. And then uh, I just store them in here. I never have any mice issues in this house, um, but it's easy to store. And I've got this scoop feeder or scoop, which I use to fill up the big post feeder. And then I've got this handy uh, filler here that I'll fill up with the yellow scoop. And then this just pours right in the tube feeder. So let me get started and get that taken care of. All right, show you how this works. This is a great bird feeder. I just got this on Amazon. This just pops open like this. Then I'll take the big scoop and fill this up like that close the lid now when you go out there to fill you just open this up and it'll fill the tube and you don't have any problems getting that in and then this other one I'm just gonna fill up like this and I can fill the uh, the post feeder real easily very easily with this yellow scoop see it's really windy out today we'll take this down all you do is this top comes off, folds like that. Take this one, take the cap off like that. Put it in here. And this fills the tube right up. Makes life a lot easier. You're not trying to wrestle getting the seat in here. Then put it down, put this cap back on, and put it right on. It's that easy to do that with this uh, tube feeder. Birds are happy. Uh, lots of different larger and smaller birds will fit into this one. All right, now we'll fill up this post feeder. I said this one's easy to do. I just use this yellow scoop full of seed. Set that down on the ground. Reach underneath here, it's just got a small pin you pull out. This drops down, so you can just easily, I'm six foot four, so this is pretty easy, but even if you're short, just fill it from the top. There's room on the top of this one to leave some extra. Lift this back up, reach underneath here, put that back in the hole, and that's how easy it is to fill up this feeder. 
I have any extra seed left in here, I'll fill this top tray. I've drilled holes in this top tray so if it gets wet, the water will run out. Same in this little mini tray. I've got holes drilled in this to let the water out. But I never have any problems with this one. Last one we have to do is the suet feeder for all the woodpeckers that we get. This is the suet feeders. Um, I've got wire ties on here in case we get a raccoon or a squirrel. It's got their, take their tiny little human hands and try to open this up, which they have in the past. You just open up the suet feeder like that. I've already cut the protective cover off this. So you just turn it upside down. Some people don't like to touch that. Put that in there like that. And I take a single wire tie and I put it through here. Once again, so those little devil raccoons can open this. Switch sides. I already cut the other wire tie off of this side. Put this one in. Another wire tie. And if you are indeed, whoops, wrong one. If you are indeed a gardener, you always have pruners on your belt, like these, bypass pruners, not anvil pruners, come in handy. Take this back, put it on the hook, and my woodpeckers will be. And I've got to hang this back up here. Now I do is I tilt this up, has a little, there, put it on, it's all protected. So whether it's uh, nut hatches that come in here, or if it's woodpeckers, like I said, two or three varieties of woodpeckers come here every day, and I am good to go.